Gastritis. This video gives you a comprehensive account on gastritis. If you are preparing for your final year exams or semester exams this might help you to touch gastritis to the point. Treatments will be discussed in another video. In simple terms, gastritis occurs when the lining of the stomach becomes inflamed after it's been damaged. Here the word inflamed should be defined a bit. Inflammation is the body's immune system's response to an irritant. These irritants may be pathogens, germs, like bacteria, viruses or fungi, external injuries like scrapes or damage through foreign objects, effects of chemicals or radiation. It's a common condition with a wide range of causes. For most people, gastritis is not serious and improves quickly if treated. But if not, it can last for years. Let's start our discussion with the basic anatomy of the stomach. The stomach is a muscular J-shaped hollow organ in the gastrointestinal tract. It performs a chemical breakdown by secreting digestive enzymes and gastric acid to aid in food digestion. The pyloric sphincter controls the passage of partially digested food, chyme, from the stomach into the duodenum, where peristalsis takes over to move this through the rest of the intestines. In classical anatomy the human stomach is divided into four sections, beginning at the cardia. The cardia is where the contents of the esophagus empty into the stomach. The fundus is formed in the upper curved part. The body is the main, central region of the stomach. The pylorus, from Greek gatekeeper, is the lower section of the stomach that empties contents into the duodenum. Histologically, stomach walls consist of a mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa and serosa. Within the body and fundus of the stomach lie the fundic glands. In general, these glands are lined by column-shaped cells that secrete a protective layer of mucus and bicarbonate. Additional cells include parietal cells that secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor, chief cells that secrete pepsinogen, this is a precursor to pepsin. The highly acidic environment converts the pepsinogen precursor to pepsin, and neuroendocrine cells that secrete serotonin. As we discussed earlier, stomach secrete powerful acids and proteolytic enzymes to help digestion of food. These have the capacity to produce gastric mucosal injury and digest the stomach itself, this is prevented by the following protective mechanisms. Mucus layer, secreted by cells in the superficial parts of the gastric crypts in the body and the entire gland in the antrum which acts as a protective covering over the mucosal surface. The pH of the mucus layer is maintained at a near-neutral level. Prostaglandins, main PGs produced by gastric mucosa, are PGE2 and PGI2. They enhance gastric mucosal defense by reducing gastric acid secretion, stimulating epithelial cells to produce more bicarbonate and mucus and mediate hyperemic response. Bicarbonate, secreted by surface epithelial cells and concentrated within the mucus layer. This helps in neutralizing back diffusing acid and maintain the near neutral pH in the mucus layer. Good mucosal perfusion, quick removal of back diffusing acid, increased secretion of buffer, and facilitation of rapid healing of superficial mucosal injuries. Often due to imbalance of luminal acidity and mucosal defense that discussed above, predispose the gastric mucosa to acid-induced injury and inflammation. This is called as gastritis. If the exposure to the causative factors is short-lived gastritis is named as acute gastritis, and if there is persistent exposure to the causative factors it is called as chronic gastritis. In acute gastritis, mucosa is hyperemic, congested and edematous. Minimal inflammatory cells can be seen histologically and quickly heals by resolution once the injurious agent is removed. Causes predisposing acute gastritis include NSAID and aspirin due to inhibition of PG synthesis. Alcohol. Acid and alkali ingestion due to direct injurious effect on the gastric epithelial cells. Severe physiological stress like sepsis, multiple trauma, burns, intracranial lesions, 
Common symptoms due to gastritis include epigastric pain and discomfort, nausea and vomiting. These symptoms are called dyspeptic symptoms. And acute gastritis symptoms are more severe, and in chronic gastritis less severe but persistent. If there are erosions and ulcers there can be hematemesis and melina. Complications of acute gastritis include erosions and ulcers leading to bleed. Sometimes bleeding can be profuse and require blood transfusion to prevent hypovolemic shock. Ulcers can penetrate the full thickness of the wall and cause perforations giving rise to peritonitis and internal bleeding. Diagnosis, Upper GI Endoscopy Upper GI Endoscopy is a procedure which uses an endoscope, a flexible tube with a camera, to see the lining of upper GI tract, including esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. During upper GI endoscopy, biopsies are obtained by passing an instrument through the endoscope to take small pieces of tissue from stomach lining. Stool tests, stools are checked for H. pylori infection and for blood in stool, a sign of bleeding in stomach. Urea breath test, urea breath test is used to check for H. pylori infection. For the test, patients swallow a capsule, liquid, or pudding that contains urea that is labeled with a special carbon atom. If H. pylori is present, the bacteria will convert the urea into carbon dioxide. After a few minutes, patient will breathe into a container, exhaling carbon dioxide. If the test detects the labeled carbon atoms, it confirm an H. pylori infection in digestive tract. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy the video.